Yo, Fino here. Imaginary Scramble is out, and it's actually quite easy to lose time early on if you're bad at planning. Lucky for you, yours truly is here to lend a hand. Let's get into it. The main story portion of Imaginary Scramble has you groping around a series of four maps. As you discover treasures and defeat enemies, you get void survey points. Hitting certain milestones lets you advance the main story, which, by the way, they love throwing mandatory supports and fixed parties at you, so get ready to suffer through some pretty slow fights on that front. Thankfully, the navigation part of the event is far less miserable. To expose parts of the map, you can use scan patterns based on specific servants. At first, your only option is Osakabe Hime, who exposes a 3x3 square centered on your chosen point. Using scans requires resources in the form of dazzling scales, fins, and teeth. Oki specifically needs scales and fins in a 2 to 1 ratio, so you'll be farming for those. Map 1 comes with 3 free quests, but the Saber Note is going to be your bread and butter, since it drops both things you need to use Osakabe Hime. Now the monster part drops aren't affected by craft essences, instead drop increases are tied to summer related servants. You may have noticed that Castoria is not on this list. I guess her summer camp bonus doesn't count. No, the only meta support on here is Scotty, meaning that fast, full bonus teams are necessarily going to be quick teams. For this note specifically, I found that Summer Ilya does a reasonable job in combination with Imaginary Element. You see, there are three damage CEs for this event. Imaginary Around, Imaginary Element, and Like a Bird. The last one you can get from the shop. Getting materials early on is a tedious process, but thankfully you have options besides free quests. There are two types of discoverables on the map. The first are treasure chests. Some of these contain monster parts, and if you get lucky with enemy placements, you can chain these to explore large parts of the map without grinding more materials. Map 1 has two chests with monster drops, and you can find them in the south and northeast. As for the enemies, you'll see red silhouettes on the map that stop your scans. The darker of these are usually invisible enemies. What this means is that they have single hit damage reduction before they take normal damage, so you want a disposable NP to pop these pseudo bars before your main attacker comes in for the double tap. In this footage, I'm showing off with a variety of servants, but a regular Nita Chris or a Rosh do the job just fine. Then there are bright red silhouettes. These are special encounters that want specific supports to remove their particular protection. These aren't friendless supports, rather a separate mechanic that uses up monster parts just like the scans. To save some breath going forward, this is what I mean when I say support. Also, I won't mention what the removable effects do unless you're forced to interact with them. Generally, you don't want to mess with them unsupported. Uh, you can if you really want to. For instance, the far west enemy on map 1 wants Raiko. You can brute force it with a powerful archer if you really want, but it may take a while if you can't get a one-shot going. The northwest enemy wants Nemo, but it can also be brute forced with a sufficiently strong archer. Subsequent enemies have much higher resistances, so it's not really worth the trouble of fighting them unassisted, even though it's hypothetically possible with damage over time stacking. It's like turning every fight into the crab battle. Why would you do that to yourself? Something else I have to talk about is that the stuff on the map isn't guaranteed to spawn in a specific place. Depending on whose game you're looking at, shadows and treasures can drift quite a lot. That's why if you look up maps on, say, GamePress, they give approximate positions. You can still use these to guess where objectives are by their relative position, but get ready to adapt. In map 1, I'd recommend doing a thorough sweep, since points in this section are far easier to get than in area 2. Find an edge and work along it. Oki's scan pattern works the best when you maintain your y-axis and sweep horizontally, so unless you need to go around something or hit an immediate ping, try to make clean movements with her. Map 2 has a lot more in the way of bad encounters. These are the bright red ones I mentioned earlier. The south center enemy wants Frankenstein, so you should avoid it for now and return later. The southwest enemy wants Oki. You can do that early on, just remember to bring an AoE Lancer. The center north enemy wants Melt and includes a large number of small mobs, so get an AoE Saber ready once you unlock that particular support. The relevant material chests are on the south and west walls, with two more drifting around the northwest and center east respectively. The one in the south is going to require some careful weaving to get, since it's between two bright red enemies. This area adds two more free quests. The caster note gives Oki materials. If you happen to have some Mordred, she can farm it with a single Castoria and imaginary element. Map 3 finally gives us good access to teeth nodes, which means you can start using scan patterns besides Oki. The first free quest gives teeth and fins, while the latter gives teeth and scales. That second one lends itself to a Dante's team if you can run one. Hypothetically, you could try Voyager, but I haven't, so buyer beware. The body part drops are mostly on the bottom side of the map. You can get them by going west and then north once you reach the edge. You may have to double back once you get to the top, but that'll save you some farming. As for the big enemies, the far northeast encounter asks for Zhang Yu as your special support. You don't have him at this point in the story, so avoid it for the time being. The near northeast enemy has three different types of buffs. They require Saber Fran, Nemo, and Oki respectively. You can actually do this with either Nemo or Sakabahime because these buffs give a single card type resistance. So pick Nemo and use an Arts Attacker or Oki and a Buster Attacker. They still have some general resistances by the look of it, so give your main attacker the Like a Bird craft essence. 
The due south enemy asks for Melt as your support. It's a huge Spriggan, so bring a powerful archer. Somewhere to the north of the Spriggan is an enemy that asks for Nemo. Finally, the far north enemy asks for a Raikou support. Aside from the two northeast enemies, you can take on the big game in this zone without too much difficulty. Also of note is a giant ghost node that will recommend a support, but it's a dark red encounter, so don't waste your resources unless you absolutely need to. Then we come to map 4. Initially, you won't run into any enemies, so focus on getting the treasure. At this point in the event, I had the materials to use Raikou's search pattern only, so I had to make do. Given the lack of radar blocking clusters, it's actually not a bad time for this. The monster part treasures run a circuit around the middle and top of the map, so just don't hug the bottom. There's a lot less in that portion. If you have large enemies left on the previous maps, except the one that requires Zhang Yu, now's a good time to do them. A few story segments in, you'll unlock new free quests. These drop all three materials, though the Lancer node drops currency while the Rider one doesn't, but with the benefit you get more monster parts overall on the narrower pool of potential drops. If you're crazy enough to have a good Samurushi, she can actually do a full monster part bonus team. Eventually the enemies will show up. Just blow them away and mop up stragglers from the earlier maps to hit the point threshold and you'll unlock map 5. Oh, that reminds me. At some point in the process, you have to fight a foreigner servant. Try to take someone that can bypass evasion because they have a permanent chance-based evasion and it's really annoying. Once you're on map 5, there's no exploration, just story fights. If you have your own Van Gogh, it's a great time to use her. Otherwise, get your counterclasses and brace for a slog of foreigner encounters. After that, you'll be done with part 1 and stuck waiting for the time gate, uh, which I believe unlocks tonight as of this recording. Some general part 1 advice. Many of the story fights have fixed rosters and they're very annoying due to the combination of underpowered servants, the lack of synergy between them, and the fact that several have their NPs disabled early on. Generally, you want to use Yang as your main damage dealer and back her up with Van Gogh's abilities when you can. Use your NP liberally unless you're about to enter the final wave of a fight. Also, don't be afraid to go backwards and finish off old enemies on previous maps. It's a good source of points and if you think you're close to unlocking a new free quest, it's worth risking over going straight back to the grind. With that said, like, subscribe, and stick around for part 2. I ain't done yet. In the meantime, did you roll Nemo? If you did, I made a guide for him which I'd give two thumbs up. The guide I mean, not Nemo. No conflict of interest there.